Hello. How the hell are you, Glenn? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in the bush for three days. So I have no idea in the what's bush. even happening in the world. Oh. All I know is Bell Canada cut off our satellite TV. So you can't like go on the internet and stuff. There's uh, my computer is not able to do that. Oh, wow. And somebody who was here over the last few weeks screwed up the computer that I was sent from California to the point where you can't even uh, put in a disc. It tells you that it's full. So uh. I, ha I have no communications except my 20-year-old computer and the radio and the telephone. Damn. Oh, man. I was in, in the bush uh, last week and uh, spent the night watching over a few houses that seemed to be uh, suspect when it came to uh, coming on our property and, and doing things. Right. And while I was there, the entire uh, earth beneath me rumbled for five to ten minutes or so. So the security people suggested that we go out for a week every night, spend the night in different parts of the farm. There are eight corners on this farm. Mm -hmm. And um, see if we could figure out whether it was a natural thing linked to earthquakes or a, a, a natural thing linked to some locomotive system that might be moving underground. And, um, so we spent the first night um, in the bush, uh, and, and I didn't feel anything, but they had instruments. Second night, it rained all night. Uh, I was soaking wet, and and still I didn't feel anything. The third night, it was freezing all night, and <laughs> cold as hell. Uh, but I did feel uh, some movement underground. They recorded things with their instruments. Uh, tonight they said we didn't have to go back out because they've been able to triangulate uh, and, and find out exactly where they think there is a, a moving structure underground. Something like a, um, a conveyor belt or something to that effect was uh, probably responsible for, for the type of thing we felt. Now, they, there's a, a question that was brought up by a friend of mine in California. And, and she said, it all depends on the kind of feeling you have. If, it, if it's an earthquake, you have a feeling of moving like you were on a ship sideways feel that you might vomit, you know, be seasick mm -hmm. type of thing. But if it's, uh, if it's uh, a man-made thing, the movement is up and down. This was a movement up and down. However, she's only talking about earthquakes like the San Andreas Fault who move sideways and hasn't considered the possibility that it is, in fact, a blind thrust, which is an earthquake that moves up and down rather than sideways. So I'm not certain yet what we felt on the ground. Security seems to believe that it's mechanical, but I suspect we might be in the early stages of rising. That's what I was just thinking. Oh, man. Wow. So, I mean, 
this area is is right for it. it uh, the um, blind thrust uh, is known for leaving a hill on on the surface. I was born in this area in Ottawa in a place called Sandy Hill, and the Parliament buildings are located on what we call Parliament Hill, and the uh, Bible talks about a city on a hill, but there really is no real mountains here. They're all worn down. They're part of the oldest mountain chains in the world, the Laurentians and stuff. But uh, there could be a mountain <laughs> if if there was a blind thrust rising to make up for the lowering of the U.S. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing for the last three days. It's my first chance to get back into the house and and uh, start reading on the background of what they think is going on, which is a theater based upon the story of the people who have, in fact, assembled around CIPI. Institute, the common denominator being the story of Akhenaten, going back to Egypt in about 1500 and some BC. So I'm now reading, rereading uh, a book by Velikovsky. Uh, Velikovsky, it means in the code EC. Lick of Sky. Lake of Sky. So, water rising up to the sky would correspond with the Great Lakes becoming the Great Sea again. Uh, rising. So that uh, we are already in our place here, three three hundred some feet above sea level, but we could end up being a thousand feet above sea level by the time the lake increases its boundaries and comes right to our front door. How long do you think that that takes? I have no idea. No idea yet whether it can be done overnight or if it takes years to happen. Because I suspect, however, that it's not years. Cause I suspect it's not overnight. But a process maybe that lasts uh, a few months to a year. Because I remember you saying that... um. That allegory of the the particle accelerator. Well, you know, particle accelerator is is basically a bag uh, called a hadron yeah. being hit. It's like a comet. Yeah, and yeah. exploding its contents. Mm -hmm. The same thing can be said of Earth at one time. Earth in upheaval, when Earth was hit and it exploded its contents. Exactly what that was, uh, I'm not totally certain. Uh, I know the moon was part of what was exploded, but there are some uh, scientists who believe that Mars and Venus used to be part of the same piece as Earth and the moon, and it was the the breakup of that that created those four entities. Other scientists say that it was uh, Mars and Venus that broke off, and Venus hit the Earth on the way by, making the moon break off from the Earth. So it's, uh, it's an open question, but it's certainly linked 
to the same principle as as a hadron being hit uh, and, and exploding its contents. I remember you saying uh, with the with the moon, if it was to get blown out the sky, like yeah. doesn't the moon affect the climate too over here? Yeah, well, the moon affects tides. It's yeah. basically a gravity thing. So with no moon, what do you think that would happen? What do you think would? Well, it, it's um, a question of whether there is nothing there or whether something else takes its place. And uh, the coming sun, Alder Amin, is supposed to be seen from the Earth in the same line of sight as the moon is currently. The moon would basically be a um, a flaw, if you will, mm-hmm. as viewed from Earth in Alder Amin. I think there was a book called uh, A Moat in God's Eye. Uh, therefore, it would have to be removed. So that may be the the underlying purpose between behind uh, the destruction of the moon, whether it's done by uh, laser focused on it that overheats it and blows up, made up of uh, the northern lights, or uh, whether private sector sending rockets to the moon Unlike comets, they don't arrive and hit every few thousand years. Uh, they they would be arriving regularly, and that could end up making the Swiss cheese uh, appearance of the moon uh, more likely looking like a golf ball until finally it breaks apart. Then the pieces come tumbling down on Earth. Yeah, um, with my situation, um, I, with this process with me, like, I'm, I, because I, I had to basically run around and go all these places, and um, <laughs> actually, I was gonna do something today, and I postponed it because, like, I don't like my car. It's, I share it with my brother, and um. The car has like inspection from like last year, and mm-hmm. and and I had to some somebody called me up, somebody I knew was in jail, and they wanted me to pick him up, and I went over to the jail and tried to pick him up, and he wasn't there, and I almost got my car impounded, and 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 I think arrested, but they let me go, and I'm I I, I didn't I postponed what I had to do today because um uh. Because the place where it's supposed to go is it's full of sheriffs and stuff walking around. So, I don't know. I, I, didn't, I really don't want to get uh, a car impounded right now at this time. Then I won't be able to do anything. But um, well, I, I was thinking yesterday that there was something happening uh, that I would recognize on TV. And that's why Bell Canada... Oh, cut off my programs and and haven't put them back on yet, even though uh, I've called them twice mm-hmm. and they call me once to find out if I was satisfied with the service. I said, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I just rub it in your face. Huh? You're 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 asking the wrong question. Yes, the persons were polite. Yes, they <laughs> tried what they could to be helpful but no nothing they said was going to happen has happened you know they said they were going to fix the problem yeah. so but i i'm pretty sure the problem is is on purpose you know and its order is coming down from way up high in bell canada yeah. One of the uh, persons talking to me yesterday had someone speaking in their ear. I could hear uh, 
the answers they gave before they gave them as the one behind them told them what to say. So this person that you said um, was at your house for a few weeks, was it a... From Scotland. From Scotland, you think he was responsible? Yeah. Wow. Wow. He's the guy who spoke to you on the phone. Yeah. Spent 50 days, 49 days really, on Mm -hmm. the farm, and uh, a day either way going back home. On both trips, uh, he had uh, fears that the plane was going to go down. Mm -hmm. At the airport in Glasgow on his way here, he was delayed for three hours, they said, while they had to repair the plane. Mm -hmm. Then on his way back, he was uh, delayed in Toronto, flying from Ottawa to Toronto before taking the plane for Glasgow. He was delayed for three hours, received a letter from his uh, travel agency saying that uh, the plane that was to be made available for his return journey was unavailable, Mm -hmm. and they would be having to bring in a replacement plane, uh, a Boeing, which uh, would cause a delay of three more hours to his already I think two hour stay in Toronto between flights. So he called me from there and he said, uh, you know, he really didn't know if the the plane was being replaced with a plane that would function yeah. going across the ocean, yeah. or was it being replaced because the one he had originally planned to get on was the one that would not function all the way. Then he called me from Glasgow to say, I've arrived. The only way I lived through all of this was I got on the plane and sat in my seat and fell asleep. I didn't wake up till we landed. Uh, He said, I I couldn't have been awake on the plane more than a half hour. I think it's something like a five, seven hour trip. The, you, I don't see like how he could be. You know, I guess I wasn't there. But I don't, like how he could be like responsible, maybe because was did you saying like he personally did something to you? Or? No, uh, he apologized to me for allowing one of the older people he met here on the farm uh, to take drugs front of him. He didn't say anything at the time, but he said, I should have known better. I told, uh, I told the, the guy in the morning that uh, you should know better, that uh, if, if uh, you take drugs here, then uh, the headlines in the paper the next day are not going to say Ian, an outsider arriving at the Institute, took drugs. What they're going to say is the Institute run by Glenn Keeley is bound to have people using drugs. Should have more respect for us here. I mean, what would what would possess him I go up there and even... I mean... Well, it, mm-hmm. it, that's the question. Did he do it out of uh, just stupidity, or was it uh, planned? Yeah. Anyway. Saying, like, why would somebody just go up there and take drugs? Like, if they're going up to your your farm, right? They would have to already know, like. That we're not into that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. So, but Ian still hasn't apologized to me, the guy who took the drug. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, the last time I told him when he was leaving, mm-hmm. he said, Glenn, I don't live like you. 
well, if you don't live like me and you want to take drugs, don't come here. This is for people with functioning brains. Mm. But that's what happened, and and uh, Gotti came to me the next day and said, you know, I was sitting there. He came and he sat beside me, and and because he was older, and he was uh, part of the group that goes to the farm regularly, mm-hmm. just didn't say anything, didn't think. But I, I should have. Sorry for it. And it won't happen again. So. Mm. But I had to leave during that period in time because if the cops had come on a raid, that would have been worse had I been here. So All of that created a whole bunch of new experiences. I'm thinking, you know, Glenn, I'm thinking just, just, just driving up to being like just, just to drive up there. Maybe if I drove up there and get a, like rent a car or something and just drive up there, maybe I won't have problems. They won't give me problems. Because it, they seem to always really be anal about it is, is when you like take the Greyhound bus or take, uh, I guess, go I, take I have no idea. How that works. Um, what problems you would have getting across the border, but you know you're always welcome here. So. Yeah. Uh, you mind, know how to what happened? Mind you, sometimes you have to sleep on the floor. Or <laughs> That's a, in my life, Glenn, uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've slept in, uh, uh, I slept in, in outside <laughs> in the parks. And I had those experiences already. So have I. And and I've slept outside in February for a week at a time in mm. the middle of a snowbank. So mm. uh, it's not fun, yeah, it's not. but it needed to be done at the time for experience. This week was not fun, mm. but needed to be done. Uh, well, um... I'm supposed to speak to Tom. Uh, I don't know when, because uh, I work on Tom. So. He, he, see, hmm? he ended up being what I would call uh, the Tiger Woods of helpers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's a machine made to help. <laughs> yeah. uh, and for for seven weeks, it was a, a pleasure to have somebody who is uh, not only willing but able. You know, he's he's not an old man, mm-hmm. twenty-seven years old. He's uh, just under six feet tall. Um, he has energy that's unbelievable. You know, when we came to cutting and splitting wood and stuff like that. I, I thought for sure that after half the wood was done, he would be finished. Had a coffee and he went back out and he worked twice as fast on the second half as he did on the first half. So it was amazing to watch. There's no, it's not for everybody to be that way. Some people help with their bodies, and some people help with their minds, and some people help with both. Uh, for me, personally, I don't know what I would be. I, I could do labor. I can do stuff like that, use my mind, but I would have to be there to see what I'd be helpful at. It, it, it's always left up to the individual to say what it is that they want to do whether it's in the house or on the grounds. And and I try to put a rule in, which is often disobeyed. If it's physical labor, 
you should not do it more than an hour at a time. No sense in going about doing something and then being totally worn out so that you can't participate in any of the discussions afterwards because you're you're broken. Okay. But uh, the number of people who come here that uh, when you try to stop them, it doesn't work. Because that, that's the way we, we uh, train them, brought up, yeah. to work eight hours. <laughs> I said, you're going to get me called our goddamn slave master. <laughs> <laughs> and I have nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm... They stay tough. <laughs> yeah. And they keep on working. There are uh, three, at least, uh, that I can put in that category. One is the guy that took drugs, you know, which uh, didn't make me feel too happy. It's like, um, you know, uh, I know, like, uh, I know, like, one person who. The people I usually see who take drugs, they're just, uh, I don't know, I guess they, they can't deal with, uh, I don't know, I feel like it's, I look, I see, I look at it like it's kind of childish. Yeah. yeah. I mean, life is much more exciting yeah. than being drunk or yeah. stoned. Yeah. And if you stick to what's real, you know, out there, all kinds of things that that make one happy. That's that's basically what the guy from Scotland, Tommy, was telling me. Is the one thing I can say is I've spent 49 days. There wasn't one day the same as the last, and there wasn't a minute that was boring. No. There was always something happening. Well, I wouldn't be bored. Just me, because the stuff that I find interesting, most you know, most people find boring. But I, I, I wouldn't be bored. Yeah. So, the only thing is, uh, from what I heard, speaking to um, Dana, like, uh, and hearing from Tom, it's like uh, you gotta kind of be on your P's and Q's. You gotta be aware all the time of like this thing that's that's happening over there. Yeah, you, you you cannot uh, think that you can uh, say or do anything mm -hmm. without it being known. Yeah. We are being spied upon mm -hmm. by our friends as well as our enemies. Yeah. And if you don't keep that in mind, uh, then you can uh, get in trouble. And I have no problem with that. I've been living with that all my life, so uh, I I I don't have any secrets because I know it's senseless. Well, secrets get you in trouble, and and trying to do things secretly gets you into more trouble. So the only qualification I apply to what I keep secret is if it might end up in causing harm to other individuals. Information to myself because you know, they've been helpful along the way and I have no intent of causing them harm. I know they live in a world run by the enemies of the good people. Nah. No sense giving up people who are trying just by divulging, you know, secrets about where they are at what particular time or what they're doing. Senseless. The only thing I'm worried about is, like, say I go there and on my way out, uh, on my way over there, I don't want to just, like, lose my life. Uh, you know. You're never... In, in that kind of danger from our friends. Yeah. 
the enemies are fairly simple to define. They're usually the people with the badges. Corporal-like. <laughs> Cops and the pros <laughs> are a little light-headed. Those are the ones I'm dealing with right now. The crew cuts. Pros is any professional people yeah. whose life depends on earning money. Usually for things that most people would call games. Cops are more interested in collecting money from fines than in doing the right thing. They're usually family-oriented. The father was a cop, the son was a cop, yeah. grandson was a cop. So it all sounds a lot like engineering to me. Yeah. Social, if not generic. Yeah, I do notice that, too. It's like a... Today I went into the police and I said to the woman on the counter that I had contacted the detachment sergeant a month ago. My security suggests that by now I should have received a, um, either a telephone call or a written statement on the complaint I filed a month ago that the police had orchestrated a phony accident report to the benefit of insurance companies to which uh, they may be paid bribes or kickbacks or whatever as the insurance company uses information to raise rates on, on people like us who are investigating political activity. Mm -hmm. uh, Apparently he called I was out on, was on my phone on this afternoon. He said he called back tomorrow. But I, I want to file the complaint with the Public Complaints Commission and let them come back. You know, I really don't care if they deny everything. It only implicates them. Mm -hmm. I let it run its course. If they do the right thing, that's nice. If they lie about it, well, that puts their name on the list. Oh, man. I called you today, man. You really know how to just uh, make, like, just turn around somebody's day. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fun here. <laughs> it's fun here if your mind's in the right place. Yeah. It's uh, you know, scary for the scared. But I guess the the lady from Massachusetts uh, isn't scared because she sent me her and her son's last month's rent. By mail today, saying deposit it because we'll be arriving. He told me on the telephone probably in January. We'll spend two years in Canada going to school, mm -hmm. at the college here, and at the same time, those two years apply to landed status, mm -hmm. which would apply if she were to request permanent residency. Mm -hmm. So that may be one way you should be thinking about it. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, I was just talking to Dana about that. I go to, that's how I was going to come to Canada originally, years ago. I was actually going to move there, do like a school thing and but they wouldn't let me through the border. And I was signed in, my schedule, I had my, my 
class and doesn't know everything. So I don't know. I'll probably take like a gym class or something. <laughs> but your 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 time has probably expired on on their reasons for keeping you out. So yeah. If yeah. you do it again, maybe a different outcome. Because yeah. the lady claimed I had to do all these things, but I I have a passport. I I think I might be able to just go through the like. But Just don't mention my name. I, hell no. I don't even know you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what that would do, but nobody that comes here ever says I'm going to see him. Oh, no. I'm, I have, fa- I have like, the best uh, excuse. I, I actually have family in there, so. Yeah. I'm just going to see my family. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. As a matter of fact, when I filed a complaint at the police department uh, the, the following couple of days, there was a, an AWACS surveillance plane flying over, <laughs> uh, <laughs> taking soundings in infrared and ultraviolet and all damn, that. Damn, man. They really... These, is, the, is the security team, are, are they... Are they like recording all of this? Yeah. God, man, these it's people. All, all to be presented at the appropriate moment in uh, what they call the court of appropriate jurisdiction, an international court that has no links to any government. So, do you think, um, like, if I were to stay up there for a while? I probably would be harassed like you are. Back you then. never know. It depends on what situation they consider you to create. I guess Dana wasn't harassed when he was here. Yeah, he got lucky. <laughs> I don't think, uh, apart from feeling that he was being watched or videotaped at times. Uh, Either Dana or uh, Tommy felt that there was anything out of the ordinary. There were people coming and going all the time. There will be less now that it's winter because <laughs> yeah. there isn't as much to do outside in the winter time as there is in the summertime, and especially in the fall when you have to prepare the farm for, for the winter. The only thing, Jared, that you need to know is that both Tom here and I are on old age pensions. Mm-hmm. We don't have the kind of funds that I would like to have to, you know, to say anybody can come anytime. Mm-hmm. It's just getting from one month to the other is often difficult. Yeah, I can save money up when I get up there, but um, I guess I would have to use it sparingly. There's a guy that called me uh, two days ago from San Diego. He said, I've saved the money for the trip. I'm ready to come. Mm-hmm. I said, well, the money for the trip is fine, but what are you going to do when you get here? Yeah, that's... <laughs> we, we can't afford pay for people to come here Mm -hmm. and he said oh i can sleep in a barn i said well you're talking about canada now (laughs) i know how canada is too that's you know i i thought about it (laughs) i said do you know what 40 degrees below zero can be yeah it's cold pick up your body in the morning yeah think about these things i said you know, plan more for the the spring and summer. You know, think about you know, renting an RV or something like that if you want to spend that amount of time. We we can feed you eggs. <laughs> we got chickens. <laughs> yeah, I seen um. I, I was watching um. Somebody posted a video on the internet. Um, I seen a video. I seen a picture, like a recent picture of uh, Alan Watt. 
and this guy has like hair like past his shoulders now. Got hair like what? He got his hair past his shoulders now. It's um, uh, really long. You've been listening to what I've been saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He knows because you know he had a tied back, and I'm like, wow, man. And he, but you know, I just can't understand how a guy could actually know the you know the truth. I guess you could say. And you Scottish. It all begins in Scotland. Yeah, but how can you go out and 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 just get up there every day and actually, like, get into another reality in your mind and, like, it's really real, like, the thing that... I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Me neither. <laughs> it's to get up there, like... It all depends how they were engineered. Yeah. And uh, I know that I wasn't very well engineered socially because I didn't spend any time at home that I could be away from home. Mm -hmm. It's the genetic part before I got there that bothers me. I have no doubt that the parents I was raised with were not my parents. They were step-parents put in place, but I was manufactured someplace else. And they and, and they actually like raised you your whole. Well, they they that knowledge. To live in their their apartment. It was basically it. Although the father was never there because he was drunk most of the time, and and the mother um, was was living in a building that belonged to her mother. And, uh, she missed the rent every now and then. Well. Nobody would really jump up and down and throw her out. How do you go through life with that knowledge and act like nothing ever happened? That you have a child that's not yours, really yours. Well, she told me once, but I didn't believe her. My mother said that to me, too. Uh, <laughs> I, she, says, she said that to me, and I, I think about that, like, I don't know. And she said I was in the kitchen doing the laundry, and I heard crying in the bedroom, and I went, and there you were. No, nothing like that for me. Like you know, I, I, sometimes my mom, but she says it like joking, like like because uh, we all look alike. Yeah, me and all my brothers, and and uh, that's different in my family. None of us look alike. Mm -hmm. See, we all look alike, but um, I'm. I don't know. I'm starting to see that, like, I'm like maybe genetically or something. Uh, I think I look like an old Jewish rabbi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look. You look like um, like a like some Nordic. Like you, you could be yeah. a, a Viking or something. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That guy. Um. Uh, the guy. Uh, he's a Maderick. He uh, I see I seen a picture of him on uh YouTube over there, and I don't know he's like seem to be like, just criticizing you, but yeah he's growing his like hair long. Yeah, they like, all I, criticize, but they all follow the advice. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people do that? Yeah, I don't <laughs> care as long as they do something to change the ways they've had in the past. You know. Yeah. Yeah. To me, past is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Present is what's important. Working towards the future, mm -hmm. and, and they they could have been master masons mm -hmm. of all kinds, priests, whatever. In mm -hmm. the past, I don't care. And you know, you know, with the master mason, um, I was looking at a thing in the encyclopedia. They talk about the holy of holies, this place inside the temple. Yeah. And I was thinking, cause they said it was, they got this place because it used to be, they call it the ad by tum Addy tum It was basically a, a grave, a coffin where they put dead bodies in. I'm thinking, this is the place where they get material? Yeah, they kept the DNA, just put the mummy in the hole. Yeah. And that's, and, and, that, and then they use that as a symbolic thing when you go to the third degree in masonry. 
the master degree, master mason. And I when think, you read the the real story of how the temple was built yeah. uh, and how David built the foundation and Solomon finished the building, mm-hmm. then then you start to grasp the allegory of it all. Yeah. You take the things of value mm-hmm. and and you take them into the back and you put them down into the Holy of Holies mm-hmm. and then the trogs come and pick it up and take it off to Moho land. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it's, it's the same allegory in golf. You, know, you, you take the ball and you put it in the hole in the shortest possible delay. And, and if you do that well, well, you win a lot of tournaments. So the whole concept of uh, getting the stuff, fetching it, bringing it back, and putting it in their control mm-hmm. is done every day by a whole bunch of rich people who go out and get money and take it to the trust company and put it in a blind trust, and and they believe that that will accumulate over time, and they'll be gazillionaires, whatever that means. But all it means to the controllers is anything we give you, bring it back, and when the time comes, we'll knock you off and take it. Yeah. But yeah, with that thing with the temple, like with the third degree, I was saying like, to me, it, it's, it looks like when they're doing this ritual, they're basically saying, yeah, I'm a candidate for just take my DNA and use it. Jeez. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Treat like, they like don't even dummy. know. Treat me like a dummy because I am. Yeah. You're the mummy and I'm the dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Glenn, I'm... It's interesting, man. I... I because I wasn't reading the encyclopedia front to back, like, but I I started a week ago just just actually reading it front to back now, and I'm yeah. finding things like it's all there. Yeah. Yeah. But there's other. There's like a whole bunch of other because I, I this encyclopedia is like to me I don't know it's kind of scratching the surface in a sense, but because they have it, but it leads you to other things yeah. to resource like all these yeah. other people that I've never heard of, you know. Well, that's that's what doing the dictionary encyclopedia thing does is it it takes you from one place to another, and that other place can be more important than the place you started off looking at. Yeah. yeah. I do that every day when I when I'm indoors and I can I can do something on the net. It's just hopscotching. <laughs> Basically, across the words. Yeah. Yeah, like, one thing I learned, like, it's something that they do, too. Like, I think it was in the Holy of Holies. They, they call these two things, they call them the pot of manna and the rod of Aaron. And I know the rod of Aaron is symbolic because it's related to, like, the scepters and stuff that kings held in their hands. And I guess. It's related to control. They have, an, you know, they rule with an iron, I don't know, rod or... Man, ah, uh, is just a man backwards. Yeah. It's a man yeah. made up of three parts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's old man, too. Shaped like an A, yeah. which is a stepladder. That's interesting too because uh, that is a word like omen. Oh, that's a bad. It's an omen. Yeah. And omen is basically saying, I guess they're saying original. Oh, but I thought it was. Oh yeah, it is original because you go around the circle. Yeah. <laughs> kiss your own ass on the way back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's like there's all these types of things. I'm, there's one book. By a guy named Robin Crusoe, Robinson Crusoe, yeah. robe, sons in robe, or men in dresses, and you have the ruse. But this guy, I think, is a book. It's called Thousand and One Nights, 
I know you take thousand and one, it's one o o one that binary. Yeah. Code Reverse thing. the code. Yeah. Yeah. There's um there's all these little things I'm finding. No. But um that's what I want to do. Like when I get up there, I just want to bring uh. But I, I I but from what uh Dana was telling me, like when you get up there, it's, like all the stuff we're talking about, is, is it's totally real. different. Like no, like what would like when you get up when like if I would because we talk about you know stuff like the code and stuff, but he 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 said to me it's like a different mind frame now. It's like really like solutions. Yeah. That he's trying to handle. Yeah. It's, it's osmosis. Yeah. It's the story of Oz and the story of Moses, <laughs> and it all revolves around the theater called Akhenaten. Nefertiti, I, and and all of the other characters in there, uh, it, Tutankhamun. It's all that story being replayed as an unfinished symphony. Yeah. It's like there was a thing started, and it got short-circuited along the way. And our role today is to put it back in place, finish, finish the symphony, finish the story. Mm. That's uh, uh, the title suggested for the epic book that would come out of all of this, uh, the unfinished symphony. And it's got a subtitle that I prefer. It's called Worms for Sale. <laughs> Because the the word wrong, worm is starts with a W like the big W George W Bush and, yeah. and Cassiopeia in the sky all that stuff and then it's the word Roma Rome Roma oh. with Moses too I I guess that's what they're doing they're guiding us because when Moses split the Red Sea. He, I guess he was splitting he, like he went DNA. back and got the stuff and brought it back. And he's taken it to Egypt and he brought it back. Yeah. And what he was doing, but, but what, like what they mean too by taking us—that's what they're doing. They're taking us to the promised land. Yeah. Because it's a promise that they wanna. But the promised yeah. land, uh, there is no L. It's the promised DNA. Uh. So. The the Hebrew people were misled. Yeah. Moses led them to Mount Sinai, held them for 40 years. Mm. All the people who knew the real story died out. Mm. And then Moses could tell them any story he wanted. And <laughs> took the kids to uh, Jerusalem and, and that area of Palestine and, and disappeared. It says he went blind and disappeared. But in in fact, uh, blind just basically means be lin, be, be line. A line is nil on one side and a line on the other. That's one zero. Be ten. Be the new code. That's all he was talking about. But he did it by fooling the Jewish people, about what he was talking about was a physical place when, in fact, what he was talking about was a new gender that would replace them. And that would only happen here. On a new continent made like Sherlock Holmes's hat mm -hmm. that would rise a couple of years ago, a woman from South Africa sent me a, a graphic, and it was uh, of a whole city rising as one piece. All the buildings, everything, skyscrapers rising up. Well, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Ottawa, the mulatto city on a hill where I was born on Sandy Hill, is part of the Canadian shield and will rise as the U.S. goes down. 
It was planned before the U.S. was even imagined. It was done in Susa, in a country called Media, which is now known as Iran. It involved the people called the Cash Key. The Cash Key is the media. And they are also known as the Kurds. Yeah. Say cheese, turd. <laughs> also known as the Bath. Hey, Bath. Mm-hmm. Bath, skull and bone. You know, I came across a group of people that call them, uh, I guess you could call them the D Ruses, or I'm not sure what D's in the Desdemona, but they, they call them the, the Druses. Druses. Yeah. And they were like these people in uh, Mount Lebanon. Yeah. Well, the word Ruse is, is phonetically there. Yeah. D stands for number four. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know what happens in golf when the L4 is? <laughs> Watch your head. Because <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. these people, were these people like Roma or? They they were originally Roma, and and of course they become different groups of people as they uh, walk around the world in different directions, and uh, they basically are the origins of the Celtic people. Oh, the Druids. Yeah. Well, but the, the dust... They the, just play on the words a little bit. Oh, Druids and Druids, Druises. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is I-U. A, <laughs> I-U-D. Intrauterine device. <laughs> Whoa, what do you find? Dr. I-U-D. Uh, oh. Wow. Uh. Anyways, it's my bedtime because I haven't slept for three days. I got to catch up. Uh, you sure you're not taking any drugs? No, no I'm not taking any. Just kidding. I, although I did take aspirin for my arthritis when it gets bad. So. Uh, I, oh. I have no problem with drugs. Uh, if the drug is a pharmaceutical drug, and you take it in reasonable quantities, mm-hmm. and you don't mix with other things, mm-hmm. it will probably do what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. However, few people are prescribed one drug. They're usually given a cocktail, <laughs> and, and they're told to take eight times as many as they need. Okay. That's um, like... Uh, well... The thing right now, like I'm having all these problems coming up. I gotta get a root canal, and it sucks. I gotta get this root canal, and um, they prescribed me. I, I didn't. I wouldn't do it, Jerd. I've had root canals done in my life. Uh-huh. I just have the tooth taken out. You sure, man? Uh, Why? Get rid of it. Uh, man, this is get like. Get rid of the tooth. You get rid of the problem. The tooth is only. A pension plan for a dentist. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Best thing I ever did, threw my teeth out. Probably returned to what troglodytes look like. <laughs> <laughs> Except I, I put in false teeth. and oh, I would rather have false teeth than any tooth I ever had originally that that made me spend... Thousands and thousands of dollars on dentists, and the dentists mm-hmm. are basically the ones that cause you the most problem of, uh, in the medical profession. Yeah. They can put something in that tooth uh-huh. that will be released over time and kill you mm. or turn you crazy. Oh, wow. Get rid of the tooth. That's my advice. And it's cheaper, too, to get rid of it, too. Yeah. <laughs> put it put in a, a denture when you can afford it. But don't walk around with, with their stuff put it inside a tooth. 
Root canal. Two words you want to keep away from. Uh, look, he said, oh, <laughs> man. See, I told you, you know how to just turn somebody's whole day <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jared. All right, Glenn. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.